Hi, I'm Renee, and welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we're in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky at the Greyhound Tavern talking with Gabe. Hi Gabe, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. So tell me a little bit about the Greyhound Tavern and how it was first established. It was first established in 1921. A gentleman by the name of Johnny Hower uh, built it, opened it. Um, he, his wife, and his two daughters actually lived upstairs and operated the business here on the first floor. What are the living quarters like upstairs? Um, there's a couple bedrooms. There's a living area, like a living room, um, a kitchen area, and a bathroom. When Mr. Hower and the restaurant, what was it like? Was um, it was just the original first two rooms here. Um, primarily, they just served ice cream sandwiches, that kind of thing. Um, it was prohibition, so they couldn't serve any alcohol. But uh, it was it was small. It was quaint. What was it called then? Was it the Greyhound Tavern? It was then called the Dixie Tea Room. About 1937, I believe, he sold the property to a gentleman named Al Frisch. Um, in order for Al Frisch to purchase the property, he had to borrow money from his brother, who was a successful dog trainer and dog racer at uh, some of the Greyhound dog tracks in Florida. Um, in honor of his brother, Al Frisch changed the name from the Dixie Tea Room to the Greyhound Grill. Then when did it become the Greyhound Tavern? About 1987, we changed the name from Greyhound Grill to Greyhound Tavern. Now, Mr. Howard, I understand that he had racehorses? He did. He had racehorses. Um, there was a racetrack just down the hill called the Latonia Racetrack. Uh, we have a couple pictures of it in the, in the building. And uh, he raced some horses. He also had some stables in the back where he, could, where he could keep his horses. And I understand that a streetcar used to run adjacent to the property. Yes, uh, streetcars used to come from downtown Cincinnati. Uh, they would come as far as the north side of our building where there was a big circle where they could turn around and then head back north. Uh, has the building always looked like this? No, it, uh, originally it was, uh, it was just these first two rooms on the first floor. Um, and then in the, about 68, the dining room was added on. And then in about 87, we added on to the kitchen and uh, added on another dining room. So I hear that you have a room here called the Williamsburg Room. Would you tell me about that? Yes, that was the, uh, the dining room that we had added on back in 1987. And um, one of their favorite vacation spots was Williamsburg, Virginia. So some of the colonial inns and taverns in Williamsburg, Virginia, they took some of the ideas and some of the styles of those type of inns and brought it back here and kind of designed that room in that fashion. And there's a Williamsburg pub as well? Yes, that's uh, in our party room. and. Uh, it has the, it's styled after some of the old bars where it has a gate that can drop down to indicate that the bar is closed and when the bar is open you fold it up and you're ready for business. Very unique. Mm -hmm. Thanks Gabe for sharing the history of the Greyhound Tavern with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and stop, stop often. often. Thank you. Bye.